Hello Canucks fans and welcome back to another episode of the Canucks Conversation brought to you by the great folks over at Zephyr Epic. Use promo code Hockey Season. That's right, Hockey Season, capital H, capital S, all one word, Hockey Season. That will get you $5 off your order at ZephyrEpic.com. That is Z-E-P-H-Y-R Epic. Find them on all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all of the social medias. You can find Zephyr Epic on them they have got you covered for all of your trading card needs whether that be the upper deck series 2 as my co-host is holding nice matching on the clothes by the way chris uh series 2 upper deck is out now uh, you can go buy those also pokemon cards available of course at zephyr epic those are uh my co-host chris Faber's oh, hold on two favorite cards hold on look at this look what i just got my wonderful fiance got me a uh, pikachu sparkling water i'm not going to drink it sparkling water i don't really believe in sparkling water being a real beverage so i'm not going to drink it but i love the can and i appreciate that from my fiance let's rip this pack here we are looking uh, series yeah, two series two you're looking for the andre kuzmenko rookie card i got a Bo horvat in here early i got a young guns of a card you've never seen you might i don't know this is interesting this young guns here this is interesting Look at that. A mascot Young Guns as uh, it is the rookie season of Bowie. Right? Is that the name? Yeah, of this? the, this Seattle, is the name. Seattle Kraken mascot. Yes. But Ooh, that's, like, is it, that's a tough I don't know. One to say. That looks Word like of the day, it's Bowie. some sort of That looks like it's some sort of insert card. Is that worth anything or is it just a uh, normal I tell you what. That is a pretty cool card, but I have to imagine there's like a million of these, right? Like you uh Oh, well, I tell you what. 30 bucks on eBay, first one I see. So, hey. Really? Good. Yeah, but uh, we don't uh, we don't sell these cards on eBay. We give them away to kids. I got uh, Wednesday. We're going out to Abbotsford. I've been in contact with uh, with a listener of the show. They listen to the show all the time. Son loves the show from start to finish. Daughter, she likes the first 10 minutes. And she wants it to be a full 10 minutes of non-hockey talk. I don't know if I can promise you that today. We got a lot of hockey talk to get to. Uh, but we do have couple boxes of hockey cards from our friends at Zephyr Epic heading over uh, to the kids out in Abbotsford. So uh, they're going to be excited. I've uh, a bunch of cards. I think it's more lucrative to sell the cards on eBay than to give them to kids. So maybe we should start thinking. I'm just kidding. We should start thinking about uh, doing that. But no, we, we re- we've we run cards up to Squamish before. I, I got my Sonny Chibas run in when I did that one. That was a lot of fun. But yes, Abbotsford. We're heading out to Abbotsford tomorrow night. Recording this on Tuesday, of course. Uh, Abbotsford Canucks captain Chase Waters will join us later in this episode uh, around 115 for those on the live show and for those on the podcast around the 15 17 minute mark of the show you will be able to hear Abbotsford Canucks captain Chase Waters uh, making his second appearance on the show and he was a good talker the first time I'm really interested and here's what I here's what I was gonna ask you off air Chris but I always find it interesting and you know we both cover hockey and we're both kind of in and out out of the locker room usually it's the Canucks locker room I'm always interested to hear players' opinions on other things that either were said or happened around the league. And an example of this is when Connor McDavid came out toward the end of the year and basically said he hates shootouts. You went in and asked Elias Pedersen what he thought of that quote. And Petey gave you a great quote as well. Petey had some thoughts on it and he just wasn't really asked about it. Um, you know, him obviously saying that he agrees with McDavid. That story's up on Canucks Army if you want to go find it. But my point being here, Chris, is what's the hockey world talking about right now, right? It's that hit from Jacob Truba last night. And I want to get your opinion on this right off the top. Apologies that I uh, didn't look at the outline or go put this in the outline because uh, I don't do prep. I'm doing stuff before the show. I don't have time to look. But I just like coming here to talk hockey with you. And that's the main thing that's being discussed right now is the Jacob Truba hit on Timo Meyer. I'm curious to get Chase Waters' thoughts on that. But yeah, what, what do you have? Well, we'll get to that eventually, but listen, Alex is all excited. He's got something he can shine with on the show here today because what's the whole hockey world talking about? Yeah, the Jacob Truba hit, massive, massive hit. Listen, clean hit, just happened to get him in the head, okay? You got to keep your head up. Um, Alex, our producer, Alex Lard, Ottawa Senators guy. So I got a question for our producer, Alex. Ryan Reynolds or Snoop Dogg, who do you want running this team in the Senators down there? We see uh, that Snoop Dogg is now part of an ownership group making a bid for the Ottawa Senators. So I want to know where Alex stands on this. Snoop or Ryan Reynolds? Who are you going with, Alex? Uh, 
I, I I think Reynolds has the upper hand. Okay. I found Fair this enough. interesting. I, I found this interesting, Chris, because and Alex too, of course. I found this interesting because obviously what you're referring to, Snoop Dogg is part of a group, just like Ryan Reynolds is part of a group, and they're now going to be, I guess, in some sort of bidding war for the Ottawa Senators. The funniest outcome is that neither of them get the team. But Snoop Dogg was on, I don't know what show in the States he was on. It was some show on ESPN, I believe. Uh, And he was talking about why he wants to buy the Senators. And, you know, a lot of his reasoning was that he wants to bring the game – to african-american communities in the states and he wants to make it more accessible and hey like we've got like canadian tire jumpstart and all this other stuff and a lot of the a lot of the focus right now with hockey it feels like is making the game more accessible because you think about it like basketball soccer these sports that you can play by just picking up you know like picking up a ball and you're basically ready to play right those are so popular all over the world obviously and It'd be nice for hockey to get to that level. Like, it'd be really cool. It's just such a hard sport. Like, ice times, don't even get me started on practice rinks and stuff. Even the Canucks can't secure a spot for a practice rink. Like, it's hard. It's hard to find ice times, um, you know, for anything resembling an affordable price even. Um, and, that, and that's in Canada where the game's super popular, right? So um, that's one thing Snoop wants to focus on. I find that really interesting. That was what he was talking about. Um, so I don't know. I... I, I don't have a favorite, I guess. Like, I don't really care who gets it, obviously. But, like, it's something interesting to follow for sure. And it, it's something that matters to Snoop Dogg. Like, you can tell he's not just doing this for publicity or whatever. Like, you know, he went on a show and he was talking about it pretty candidly. And he was talking about how he's been a hockey fan for 25 years. And it was just, you know what, you can find the clip. I Again, if I did any prep on this show, we'd have the clip ready to go. But, uh, yeah, it, it was it was it was an interesting thing to hear. Uh, from Snoop Dogg, like it's, it matters to him. It matters a lot. I can tell it matters to Alex because Alex chose Ryan Reynolds, who's a proven winner as an owner of a team. Right? What's going on? It wrecks them, right? They just advanced. That happened, or they got promoted. Uh, Alex just wants some wins out there in uh, in the capital city. But I'm with you. Yeah, Snoop Dogg would be great. He's great for the game. Like uh, speak of the game, literally, he was in the NHL game a couple years ago. You remember that? He did a couple of play by play periods for you uh, when you're playing the video game. You talked to James Sabalski. James Sabalski will give you some stories about him and Snoop Dogg hanging out uh, at the Burnaby spot down there uh, at EA Sports, getting all that stuff done. I'd save that for another day with uh, Seaball. Uh, but hey, let's dive into it. Abbotsford Canucks, let's wrap it up. Let's get things going. A uh, couple of overtime losses, unfortunately, for the team. They lost both those games. And we talked about this last week on the show. Hey, these the Calgary Wranglers, they decided to go with the two games at home and then do the three on the road to wrap up the series. We're at that point now where they are going to wrap up the series. The Abbotsford Canucks are going to hope that they do not do exactly that as they want to extend this series. But game three is going to go on Wednesday after a pair of overtime losses. Let's talk about the one on Friday a little bit because that was a tough one. All right. Canucks are 0 for 9 on the on the power play to start this series in Calgary. That is costing them big time. And special teams, the, the worries for the Abbotsford Canucks does not stop there. They gave up. Listen to this, quads. Nine times they were shorthanded in Friday's game. Four of those penalties coming off of stick infractions from Niels Huglander in Friday's game. What did you take away? Because I know you were watching this one as well. Like the special teams is something that is plaguing this team at a level that you almost didn't think was possible. Like you just said it, 0 for 9 in this series. And let's be honest, Chris, it wasn't very good against Bakersfield either. I know they win that series. Bakersfield's much worse team than the Calgary Wranglers. Obviously, the Calgary Wranglers are the top team in the AHL. I don't know what's wrong with the power play. Like, I wish I could come on here and say, I saw this, I saw that, and this is what's plaguing them. It's not like they're not getting their chances off. Like, they are getting chances. They're moving the puck nicely. They're just not converting. And the thing that I find interesting about the power play, and maybe this is a reach, but you look at like the Calgary Flames power play this year, or even just the Calgary Flames offense in general under Daryl Sutter for the past year. Also, he's out, by the way. Uh, More on that later. But um, you look at the Calgary Flames, and I, I heard one criticism of them was just that they were kind of just shooting on net, and they weren't really worried about getting into good areas. I don't know if that's what's plaguing plaguing Abbotsford right now, but when you watch the power play, you're just seeing, I don't want to call them low danger because some of them are coming from higher danger areas, but you don't really look at it. There, there, there hasn't really been an instance, Chris, where I've watched an Abbotsford power play, 
seen them take a shot and said, wow, that should have gone in. Like, that's Dustin Wolf being Dustin Wolf. And Dustin Wolf is a great goaltender, but that's not the story here. I don't think the story is that, oh, the power play is just snake bitten because they're facing such a good goaltender. I don't think that's what's happening here. Like, that's not what I'm seeing when I watch this power play right now. And it's not really, it, it, it is, it's, it's becoming a difference maker in the series, right? Like, you think about how close these games are, going the distance to overtime, you know, Calgary winning on one goal in each game, right? In sudden death overtime. These are as close as you can get. You need to start converting on these chances. It's just, you're, you're not going to win this series. You're not going to come back in the series if you don't turn the special teams around. It's as simple as that. Yeah, simple. And then that's a spot where you can actually take advantage of the game, right? Like take advantage of, listen, you're going up against a real tough goaltender in Dustin Wolf. We've talked about him a ton. Geez, Ryan Pike, every third word he said last week when he joined us here was Wolf. And it's true. Like that's how good this goaltender is for the Calgary Wranglers. And I think that's where you need to capitalize. You need to be able to beat him when you have the man advantage. Because, hey, listen, he's going to be the guy who's going to be the sixth body in the defensive zone for them. And he's going to make the most difference. It, when you get a chance to go five on five, really, and that's including a goaltender, that's where you got to capitalize. That extra body on the power play is so massive for you to get a shot because you're not going to be able to beat Wolf with AHL goals, right? That's going to be the thing. Like, there's a reason why, you know, when you look at Danila Klimovich and you're like, hey, could he play NHL games next year? You're like, uh, maybe, like, hopefully, if he's able to learn how to score at an NHL level. He's right now learning how to score at an AHL level, and his AHL goals will not beat Dustin Wolf. He had good games in the regular season earlier this year against Wolf, even beat Wolf a couple of times, actually. And those are NHL quality goals. We're just not seeing that from the van- from the Abbotsford Canucks right now. Like the the NHL quality goals, I think of Archie Baines on the penalty kill on Friday night, scoring two goals during one penalty kill. Like it was excellent to see. And they were both high quality scoring chances that led to goals. And it's going to take that against this team and especially against Dustin Wolf. There's, there's so much to get into. And, and it just there's guys that need to step up too right like there's guys who did things throughout the regular season for this Abbotsford Canucks team you got to see more of them you got to see more from the leading goal scorer Linus Carlson who hasn't scored yet in the playoffs for this team you got to see more from Jack Rathbone in the second round he was so good so good against Bakersfield in that first round couple of goals for him hasn't seen the the scoreboard since then and and Niels Huglander is the big one right like four penalties four minor penalties one in overtime didn't even have one in the first 20 minutes we're talking four minor penalties throughout the second, third, and overtime periods, those are massive points of the game. And you can't be putting your team shorthanded like that on things where, when I, when I talked to Jeremy Carlton yesterday, the things that he said was like, they just got to move their feet. They got to get there. They can't be taking these stick infractions. These are the type of penalties that are going to bite you in the ass. Yeah, and I found Colton's quote to you pretty interesting. Um, available right now, obviously, at CanucksArmy.com. That's where I'm reading it from. I edited the article itself. But I found mm-hmm. it interesting because he didn't put all the blame on Hugland, or at least that's how I read it. When he spoke about it, um, he kind of talked about how there's not um, always that uh, continuity from series to series, like what's going to be allowed in the playoffs, right? And that's 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 true at the NHL level, and obviously it's true at the AHL level as well. But yeah, he did say at the end of the day, we need to limit the stick infractions. It goes back to that saying of don't let the ref make a judgment call, like don't force the ref to make a judgment call, right? And that's what you need to be doing right now in the playoffs because, hey, like, did I think all four of those penalties should have been called against Niels Hunglander? Probably not. Like, I think the final one, um, you know, heading into overtime, I believe it was, was um, right after he got cross-checked in the numbers and I was a little confused about that, why there was no call on that play. And I, I know he was confused, but again, that's another thing. That was a retaliatory, retaliatory penalty in a way, right? Like, he did kind of retaliate just a little bit after getting cross-checked, it seemed. And look, like, Nils Huglander carried them against Bakersfield, and they kind of they kind of need him to step up to just a higher level. Like, you, you brought up Linus Carlson, team's leading goal scorer, doesn't have a goal in the series. Um, you know, they, they kind of need that 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 step from a line because mm-hmm. that's, what, that's what, you know, helped them so much against Bakersfield was just that one line with Nils Huglander on it being so good right like we talked about that a lot so i i'm curious to see kind of kind of what happens here yeah and i mean the, you know the refereeing and hey listen i gotta give a shout out my uh my guy one of the friend of the show dj love was the uh he was the the referee in that game too and uh he's a local kid i used to cover him at uh, vancouver Alley university back in the day but that the amount of penalties you saw in that game too what are we talking there was 20 minor penalties given out throughout the game 
Like, that is too much. That is, that takes away from what playoff hockey really is. I mean, we're talking little stick infractions. We're talking things after the whistle that, you know, I, I think Colton had a point. A lot of that was going, just kind of thrown to this. It wasn't being something that had to be a penalty. And this is this this goes back to heck the three game series to end the regular season for the AHL. I mean, that was a back and forth battle of a series. It didn't feel like there was a lot of penalties being taken by either team when there probably should have been some calls, especially after seeing when they did in game two. So uh, you kind of need to adjust to that. But Carlton did bring up a good point. They they don't know the standard at this point for the penalties, right? Like they they don't know what's going to be called, what's not going to be called. It feels like it's up in the air. I'm curious to see if they let him play a little bit on Wednesday. Um, and it's going to be a very big difference for this Abbotsford Canucks team. Just talking to some of the guys, uh, I even I talked to Baines just yesterday as well. And he was saying, like, you know, you can get such big boosts during the game from the way your team plays, whether it's killing a penalty or just having a good shift or the bottom six line getting a couple scoring chances on a good shift. But the crowd can make a huge difference. And I think when you look at the Saddle Dome, which is where they played the first two games of this series, listen, the upper deck had nobody in it. So it's kind of a, it's a different atmosphere when you get into Abbotsford where everything's in there. You're going to be out there with me uh, tomorrow, Quads. It, you know what it's like in there. It's a blast. Hey, it's going to be jam-packed in there. The fans are going to be able to make a difference. And this is an extremely tough uphill battle to beat the best team in the AHL and run off three games in a row against them. But let me tell you something. The Wranglers have lost three in a row multiple times this season. So, yes, they've been excellent throughout the year. Abbotsford played them extremely well in that final series that was at the Abbotsford Center. I wouldn't write them off just yet. Two overtime losses. This team's right in this. Uh, yeah, a couple different bounces. Like, think about it. Game one, what screwed them over in game one? That own goal. That own goal really kind of, you know, hurt the team early on. And that's something. And these are just the bad bounce. You need a couple bounces to go your way to go on a playoff run. And maybe we'll see some of those coming up here uh, in the next couple of games as they host for the next three of the Abbotsford Center, and I'll tell you what, there's still a lot of hockey to be played in this uh, in this series, I think. And it's it's been good hockey throughout. Like, take away the penalties and all that you saw in Game 2. It, this is fun hockey to watch. This is at a level that I really enjoy watching. I, I enjoy AHL hockey in its own right, but seeing it in the playoffs where the games really matter, it, it's been a treat, I think, to watch so far. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of brought it up there. Look, all these games, they were within a goal, right? And they, they've been able to, to take on the Wranglers in the past. So... Look, man, they're right in it. They're right in it still. Um, we are heading to the Abbotsford Center tomorrow. We're going to make our Arby's run. I think we're going golfing, too, and you've got your golf attire on right now. you got your visor, and your shirt matches your visor. Was that intentional, or is it just lighting? I think it's just lighting. This is a, I just wear this visor when I'm about to get a haircut, which I believe is tomorrow. Um, it's the, if, I get, if I got the visor on, I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. That's the way it goes with this thing. I uh, did want to mention as well, because I was out there at practice on Monday. Vasily Pod Colson, not practicing with the team. He wasn't out there when the practice started. He wasn't there working on uh, a lot of these things with the team. But I'll say this. He was on the ice. He was at the other end working with the third goaltender. I don't think he's, I don't think he's that close uh, to playing. It, there wasn't a lot of getty up on those shots he was taking at the other end of the ice. He was spending a lot of time just using his right hand as well. So, I mean, the left wrist is still bugging him a little bit. We'll have to see what happens. And when I asked Colton about it, he said the best thing for Vasily Podkols and getting into a lineup is is Abbotsford winning some games. So I don't think he's playing on Wednesday. I don't think he's playing on Friday. We'll have to see what happens here moving forward, but it's going to be an exciting one. I know that for sure. Uh, and why don't we talk to the captain of the team that we're talking about right now, Chase Waters, joining us now from the Abbotsford Center, perhaps? Nope, from the car. Chase, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Uh, excited to get you on here. Let's just get your thoughts right off the bat. You guys are coming home, three home games. What's the excitement level from this group heading into what you guys have over the next week here? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really exciting. We, uh, you know, we obviously like playing at home like every other team. And it's, uh, you know, the crowds have been amazing here in Abbotsford. And, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun playing at home. It's fun playing in front of, you know, friends and family. I think that's, uh, you know, it's a pretty special time of the year too. So it's uh It'll be good. We're all looking forward to it. Chase, the conversation that we were just having was that you guys are kind of like right there in these games. You guys are down. You're facing elimination coming back home. Are you guys able to stay positive to a level given how these games have actually gone um, and staying close in these games? Yeah, absolutely. I know. Obviously, it's one shot either way, and, you know, they got the best of us there, the first two. But I think we, you know, there's a still a, a strong belief in our in our dressing room. I think that's something that we, uh, you know, we've 
we've beat these guys before and we know you know we know we we can do it we just got to put our best best foot forward and i think that's that's important that we you know we really take care of the little details of the game and that's what's that's what's gonna this year's is gonna be uh you know brought brought by so it's uh yeah, it's exciting. It's fun. It's you know we're all, every game's been competitive so far, and we're looking forward to the next one. Does it feel like uh, the hockey gods kind of owe you guys a couple of bounces after what we've seen in the first couple of games here? With you know, heck, the penalties that were called, the own goal early on in game <laughs> one. I feel like you guys are owed a couple of bounces here in the in the following games. Yeah, I think sometimes that's you know that's hockey. Sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. And you know they're obviously a really good team over there, and they they play hard. They play fast. And yeah, obviously I'd like to you know, have that one back, that own goal. I didn't, <laughs> obviously, is it just a tough bounce off my stick there? But I mean, it's, you know, that's part of the game. And uh, that, that stuff happens sometimes. It's how it's how you respond and how, how our team is able to respond from that stuff. Chase, it's been an up and down for the referees throughout this one. We've seen 20 penalties called one game. Heck, some penalties called in the first game as well. How important is, gonna, is special teams going to be here in game three? Yeah, very important. If you look at the, you know, look at the series, uh, that's that's a lot. A lot of the goals have been scored in the power play or even shorthanded. Like last game, we had a couple there, and they had a couple of power play goals. It's uh, you know that that's a big part of this time of the year is really dialing in those areas of our of our game and being able to you know use them for momentum. And it's uh, you know being able to play at home too, use that for momentum. It's gonna be good. Chase, how was your first season as captain? When you kind of look back, obviously it's not over, but you kind of reflect on the season that it's been so far. How's it been for you being the captain of this team? Yeah, it's been fun. I think it's been uh, obviously a big learning curve for myself. There's a uh, there's a lot of a lot of veteran guys in that room that have obviously helped helped and been a been a big part of our team. And we're all, you know, we all we all push the boat the same way. And I think that's something important that we, you know, we kind of take into it every day is that everyone's a big part of our team, no matter no matter who you are, no matter how old you are. We're all we're all in this together. I think that's something. I was talking to your coach yesterday. One of the things he said was just, you know. You guys need to kind of just like continue to push. It feels like you guys are right there in all of those games. A couple of bounces are going to come your way. How do you guys kind of feed off of what the crowd can bring to a game in tomorrow's game? Yeah, it's a huge momentum. I mean, they're they're going to be loud. They're going to be supporting us. I think that's big. And, uh, you know, obviously it, it's us on the ice, but they, you know, they've been great all year. And it's uh, it'll be pretty, pretty fun and pretty special to have them there. The, uh, yeah, the crowd's been awesome, but it's it's momentum, and I think, like like you said, there we're we've been right there in every game. I think it's important to, you know, really dial in on the little things. That's what's it's going to come down to here. You guys had some some players who had great regular seasons: uh, Linus Carlson, Niels Huglander, Danila Klimovich. These three names we haven't seen score yet in the second round of the playoffs. How much do you guys believe in the kind of your top scoring players being able to step up here and you know make this series interesting? You guys are down two nothing. The big players haven't done much. Uh, from the top end of the lineup early on in this series, how confident are you in those guys coming through here in games three, four, and hopefully five as well? <clears throat> yeah, we obviously believe in those guys more than anything. I mean, they did they did it all year, and they're you know they they've been playing good. It's just sometimes sometimes the puck doesn't go in the net, and that's you know that's part of hockey as well. But they're you know they're pushing pushing forward, and I think everyone in the room is too. Everyone's like to contribute when they can offensively, and uh, yeah, just just move forward from that. Chase, we've got a question from a listener here. Uh, what did you think yeah. of uh, Ar- Arshbane's clutch two-goal penalty kill? Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know if I've ever seen that done before, but he, uh, you know, had a couple good chances there, and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna score if he gets a chance. And he's, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great player. He's, he's, I mean, you guys obviously watch him a lot, and he's, uh, you know, he's really fun to be around, be around the rink, and he's a great guy. So it's uh, pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty good on his end to be able to do that. Chase, we've seen, uh, I mentioned the top end guys here, but we did see the the guys in the kind of the bottom half of the lineup here just really have some good games, especially game two. I thought that uh, Gatcomb was a great example. He had an excellent game there in game two. What do you think about the way you guys are kind of winning the battle of the depth in this series so far? Yeah, they obviously have a, have a really good, have, have a really deep forward group. And, you know, I think, I think we do as well. And I think that's something that, you know, if we can go out there and wear, wear teams down and wear, where their guys down, I think that's something that you know is going to open up space for for ourselves and for also for for the you know the top six guys that that uh, you know make make plays out there and it's it'll be fun. It's uh, you know it'll be fun. I think Gats is, is a great example. He's been playing really well and I think that goes for for a lot of guys out there. So, 
And you guys are the younger team. Obviously, there's a lot more experience over there. How can you guys maybe use that to an advantage as this series goes on? Just having, you know, younger legs or whatever you want to call it that you guys have over there. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it, it's going to come from inside. They, you know, we've both had, have both had the same amount of days off. We both play the same games coming in and it's, uh, you know, it's just going to come down to who wants it more. And I think that's, that's what's important this time of the year. And, you know, we're going to put our best, best effort out there. Chase, I'm always curious to get uh, players' thoughts on this. It's completely unrelated to Abbotsford, but I am curious to get yeah. your thoughts on it. Right now, everybody's talking about this hit, Truba on Meyer. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. What do you think of hits like this where, you know, they're clean technically, but, you know, the rule book says they're clean. Others say they're dirty. What's your take on it? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, it's different in the – I know, you know, something stood out to me with that hit was after the fact and they you know, they talked in the handshake line i think that's part of it they're both competitors they're not i don't think true was out there trying to hurt them but it's you know they're they're competitors that's what you know sometimes that's what you have to do against your opponents and i think you know we obviously got him there in the middle of his head down and that you know that happens that happens to everyone so yeah tough one uh, but uh, yeah i mean it's hard to say it was dirty right like it, it was just a head down type of situation i um we'll close out here with one more question about the outs for team it's been back and forth for with sure. the goalies throughout the playoffs here but i don't think that's a problem i feel like for you guys like you guys are both confident with both goaltenders in this spot right now that you're going with and it feels like this Abbotsford team when you guys are going on your best hockey when you guys get these hot stretches of play a lot of it starts from what's going on in the crease how important is that going to be for one of your goaltenders, whether it be Arthur Silovs or Spencer Martin, to be one of the most important players in this game on Wednesday? Yeah, I think they've been great for us all year, and they've been great in the playoffs too. It's, uh, you know, whoever's back there, we're, conf we're confident with. And I think that's big going forward. You know, you, we know we can trust both guys, and, you know, they've both been playing really good hockey. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fun to watch them do their thing out there. They've been, they've been amazing for us all year, and, I, I mean, that's not going to change moving forward, so. Yeah, final question here. We'll let you go on this one, Chase. Jet told us last week it was Tristan Nielsen who brought into the locker room one step at a time as your guys' winning song. Can you confirm or deny that? We have to ask the captain of the team. Was Tristan Nielsen the guy who brought a little bit of that to the locker room? I don't know if it was neither. It might it might have been uh it might have been Rathbone too. It might have been one of the two. I know they kind of rotate back and forth on the music, so uh I don't know if it was Tristan or if it was Jack. I'm trying to think now. I, I'd like to say it was Jack, but I could be wrong on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, i got to follow up with this then. Better DJ in your eyes. And I'm sure this, this clip will definitely not go on social media or anything, but better DJ, Rathbone, Nielsen. Um, it kind of depends on the day. I know Jack takes it for now for before games. He's kind of got the, the throwback hits. That's kind of where one step at a time came from. Or Nielsen is more of like, uh, you know, a little bit more rap and some little EDM music. But uh, I, I, they both bring, they're both good at it. I, I, I personally like Jax a little bit more probably, but that's just me. Absolutely. We'll definitely not clip this and send it to him. Uh, Chase, appreciate it. <laughs> and, hey, one, one step at a time for the final way as you guys run through this series. Three more wins. You guys are going to have to perform the reverse sweep. Abbotsford Center is going to be rocking. We know we're going to be out there enjoying it. All the best to you tomorrow. Uh, and good luck against that Wranglers team. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate the support from you guys. So thanks again. Absolutely. There he is, Chase Waters, joining us there from Abbotsford, captain of the team. Man, tomorrow's going to be fun. The atmosphere, Like, you know the atmosphere quads out in Abbotsford. It's a blast out there. And I tell you, it's ramped up even more in the playoffs. I expect it to be at another level for the second round here. And knowing the fans know what's at stake here. They know they need to see three straight home games come out as wins against the best team in the AHL from the regular season. Uh, it's going to be a blast uh, the next little bit here. We'll be back on Thursday to uh, to wrap up the post game for Wednesday night's game. Uh, but Wednesday is going to be a lot of fun. I know that for sure. Chase Waters, one of my favorite people to talk to uh, from this Abbotsford Canucks team. Well-spoken, uh, you know, says it like he sees it. And I, I, like this, I liked his answer about the Truba hit. I know a lot of people are split. You had the very simple take of uh, get your head up, clean hit. I get it. Like, mm -hmm. I get that take. I also understand why people are saying rewrite the rule book. Like, no hit to the head's okay. But then, you know, like Chase said, it happens to everybody. If you have your head down and brought up the handshake line, it's an interesting topic. It's a good off-season topic. But, uh, yeah, thanks again to Chase Waters. Of course, that interview brought to you by our friends at Zephyr Epic. 
uh, promo code hockey season, capital H, capital S is the one you were going to want to use. Okay, poll question. You want to go poll question now, Chris? Do it. Okay, our poll question. We haven't done one of these in a while. Our poll question Mm -hmm. brought to you by the great folks over at Atlas Goods. Go to atlasgds.com. Use promo code CC15 for 15% off your first order of pop rinds. These are the best fresh pork rinds straight from your microwave or air fryer. The perfect zero carb snack, high in protein and free shipping on all orders over $50. Dollars, so be sure to go check them out. Atlas Goods, locally owned and operated out of Surrey, British Columbia. Uh, AtlasGDS.com. Atlas Goods. Our poll question today: Who will hold on? Step let me tell you. Hold on. Lead... They're out of Surrey. This question was asked to uh, Archdeep Baines because uh, play-by-play voice of the Abbotsford Canucks, Brandon Assel, called him the mayor of Abbotsford. Baines was asked about this yesterday. Says it's a little bit too much pressure for him. He doesn't want to be the mayor of Abbotsford. Of Surrey, sorry. I meant to say Surrey. He's from Surrey. They asked him, do you want to be, you know, the play-by-play voice called you the mayor of, of Surrey. He said, nah, that's too much for me. It's too much uh, responsibility. It is. That's he it. has to get that Doug McCollum bowl done. It's a hard, uh, well, they hard, had a hard dig. 60,000 person stadium. Arsh, you don't want Arsh running the, behind that thing. Come on, that's too much. Let him just score goals on the penalty kill. He's good at that. Okay, our poll question today, uh, again, brought to, by, brought to you by Atlas Goods. Who will step up and lead the Abbotsford Canucks tomorrow in Game 3? Our options, Huglander or Carlson, Willannon or Rathbone, Seelovs or Martin, and as always, I'm angry. 54 votes at the time of this recording. Uh, Chris, let's see where Alex votes here. I don't know how much AHL hockey Alex has been watching, but he's heard the conversations. Hey. Alex has heard mm-hmm. the conversations. He's got he's got a, he's got opinions on this. Let's see where he votes. I was a little surprised by the results of this, uh, and let's see what Alex goes with here. Oh. Okay, Ooh. Alex goes with. Oh, do you go see Lobster Martin? Okay, my cursor was over Willen and Rathbone, but I want to talk about these. I'm going to break it down uh, quickly. I'll break down the results. Sixty uh, percent of voters saying Hoglander or Carlson. Seven percent say Willen or Rathbone. Twenty percent say Seelovs or Martin, and thirteen percent say they are angry. I voted Hoglander or Carlson. We just talked about how these guys need to step up offensively. I'm a little bit surprised, Chris, to see Willen or Rathbone not getting a ton of love. You talked about it in the preview that's up at CanucksArmy.com right now. But Christian Willen doesn't have a point in this series, right? And I look. Points aren't everything, especially for the defensive end. But uh, he hasn't looked like the AHL's best defenseman in the first two games. He just he hasn't like that. That should be a huge advantage for the Sabres for Canucks team. Look, he's on the power play. If we're gonna criticize the power play, that criticism also has to go to him. And hey, I love Christian Willand comes on the show, good guy. But that's the thing is, you have to start kind of not pointing fingers, but you have to look at the root of the problem and look. This team is not having success right now because their leading goal scorer isn't scoring, which is why I went Huglander or Carlson because they need to step up and lead. Their best defenseman has been fine. I won't even say he hasn't been their best defenseman. He hasn't been the AHL's best defenseman in this series, I don't think, right? Like, I, I think there's another level for him to get to with what he's been able to do this year. Hell, even at the NHL level, we've seen Christian Willanen have success. So you really need him to step up. You need him to be a difference maker in this series. And of course, Seelovs or Martin are going to pick up votes uh, because a goaltender can steal you a game. But look, I'll, I'll be honest, Chris, and you can disagree with me if you want. Those goaltenders, like Seelovs and Martin, have been one of the only reasons these games have been close, in my opinion. Like, these, both of these games go to OT. I don't think either of them goes to OT if Seelovs and Martin don't have the games that they've had in this series. Like, I think those guys have been phenomenal. I don't even think there's room for them, really, to step up and lead. I think they've done everything they can, and they need to continue doing it, of course. But look, like, they haven't been anywhere near the problem for this team in this series. Mm, that's a good way to put it, and, and it, it's still possible for them to lead. Heck, they haven't stood on their head. They've both been really good. Like, they both have been very good. There's a lot of scoring chances. I think Archer Seelovs was better of the two. They, listen, they both lost in overtime. Uh, I think Seelovs even allowed more goals, right? But I, I thought he was the better goalie of the first two games, at least, from what I saw anyways. Like, some some real five-alarm saves uh, from Seelovs throw. But I think, you're, I think you're right, and I think the people voting here are right, too. It's got to be, you need Huglander or Carlson to score here. 
you need one of them to score in this spot, right? And I think Willannon's an interesting one too. Like, heck, he had 14 multi-point games this season in 49 games in the AHL. He hasn't, you know, he has, he just has one assist in the whole four-game playoffs right now against Bakersfield. He had one assist. You kind of expect him to be someone who's bringing a lot of offense, and he's been, you're right, he's been good, but it's not like, uh, there just isn't something that was clicking for the Abbotsford Canucks in Calgary. I think they struggled a little bit, you know, getting from A to B, kind of getting out of their own zone, a lot of passes into feet and, and things like that. So I, I think there needs to be just a little bit of a better just locked in from the veteran guys that were there for the regular season. When this Abbotsford team was playing good hockey, you know, well, Lennon was by far the best defenseman in the league. Linus Carlson was scoring huge goals, huge timely goals. And this feels like the time where you need your, your leading goal scorer to step up and score. So I'm with it on, on, I agree with the people. I agree with you, Niels Huglander and Linus Carlson. They need to be the guys who lead in this spot right now and get this team over the hump. Yeah, I, I agree. Like there's, there's no disagreement there. Now, I want to ask you something, Chris. In this series, is there one player that you've looked at and said they've been a lot better than they were against Bakersfield? Aside from Arch Deep Baines, because Arch Deep oh, Baines, yeah. we've already spoken a lot about him. Is there a player that you've looked at and said he's been a lot better than he was against Bakersfield? I just got to say, I know you said not to say Arch Deep Baines, but I, I said it after the first two games. I thought those were two of Arch Deep Baines' worst games of the year. He was excellent in both of these games. He's been really dominant. And he was the one, him and Tristan Nielsen, they were the ones that are getting double shifted in overtime from Carlton because they were going. They were two guys who deserved to get that double shifting. And man, I tell you, all they needed was just if they got one goal in either of those games, and you come home with a split, we're looking at such a different series. It's crazy how just one goal can make such a difference in overtime situation where, listen, Abbotsford was just outplayed in overtime by the Calgary Wranglers in both games. Aside from, from Baines, I think Mark Gatcombe, has been noticeable in the second series. You didn't see him as much in the first series. In the second series, I've liked him. Actually, heck, at the Abbotsford Center against Bakersfield, he had some big hits. Like he was playing good hockey, and I guess he got rewarded for it with some goal with a goal in the in the second round of the series. So um, I think Gatcomb would probably be the only one that I'd really stick out. But I don't think anyone else has stuck out as like really made improvements. There's been a lot of guys who have done the opposite of that and regressed since the first round series. There's a lot of guys you could put on that list, but I don't think. Aside from Baines and and I guess Gatcomb, like I don't think anybody's really stepped up yet. So you hope that getting on home soil, having all this time to reset, like heck, they haven't played since Friday, right? They're gonna play on. They're gonna play tomorrow. There's still a lot of days off, a lot of practice days. Uh, we'll have to see how they come back. But yeah, I don't think there's been many guys who have stepped up their play from the first round of the series for the second round. Okay, sure. Now odds and ends. Let's see. Uh, I wanna I wanna quickly I wanna talk a little bit here. Uh, about the second round. Chris, the teams in the second round of the NHL playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, we should call them, the teams there, we're going to get a team ending a drought, right? Like, we're going to get a Stanley Cup drought coming to an end. I think the most recent team in the final eight to have won the Cup is the Carolina Hurricanes in 2006. I think that's yep. the most recent, right? And then everybody else, they're, you know, the Leafs, it's been since like 65 and you know, God forbid that happens, but you know, even like the Oilers also, God forbid that happens. Um, there's, there's going to be a team ending a drought. Obviously the Kraken, the Golden Knights have never won one, but I like it. I gotta say, I like it, Chris. And I think these are fun playoffs and you know, look there, we're seeing the New Jersey devils take a step, right? Like what was the conversation after those first two games against the Rangers, right? Was, well, it's a young team. They're just not ready for the playoffs, right? Now, a lot of that has to do with Gerard Gallant getting outcoached once again in the playoffs, just fundamentally outcoached in the playoffs. And the Rangers obviously um, losing those games and New Jersey advancing. I like to see that. I like to see a young team get a chance. Um Look, I, I like the teams. Like, I like the teams that are in there right now. Um, obviously, you would have liked to have seen Tampa Bay uh, beat the Leafs. But from a Canucks perspective, and, and sorry, continue, you, you know what? You go ahead. you have anything to say about the series, the playoff series? Because I, well, I thought about something yeah. just now. Here's the thing. It'll get uh, – I'll let you get back to that. Save that thought. I uh, just want to say two games tonight, by the way. Florida and Toronto tonight. Right, that's exciting. Jeez. Uh, and then Seattle and Dallas uh, tonight as well. Sorry, get back to your Canucks thing. I, I do want to say quickly, uh, we are going to give our predictions. So, Alex, get your mic ready as well. I want to get all of our predictions up here. Uh, we'll get to that, and we'll do it quickly. But, yeah, go ahead. How does this relate to the Canucks? My favorite thing to say on this show. 
Okay, so this is how it relates to the Canucks, and it relates to the league. And shout out to a listener, or actually, excuse me, reader of Canucks Army, Phil, uh, shot me an email. And I always like getting these emails from uh, readers and listeners. And he said something, uh, quoting Gary Bettman, uh, that Bettman said that a really good end of the year might allow a bigger cap increase for next season. Uh, The average for the last 20 years, this is Phil's math, Phil has done this here. The average for the last 20 years, 2002 to 2022, 2005 had no playoffs, was roughly 46 and a half games. Last year had the most games at 51 games, and only two other times over that 20-year span were more than 48 games played in the first round. This is looking pretty good. Like, this is pretty good. This season's first round of the playoffs had 49 games. So that's solid. Like, that, that's a pretty high number. You also consider, and people don't want to hear it, especially in Vancouver, When the Leafs advance, the league makes more money. Sportsnet makes more money, that's for sure. The league as a whole makes more money when the Toronto Maple Leafs advance in the playoffs. So while we may not love it in Vancouver, there is a good chance that the league is going to bring in some more revenue and in turn that the cap could go up a little bit higher than was originally expected. Because right now, what what are they expecting? Like one, 1.5 million? It's, It's a very small amount right now. Am I correct about that? Yeah, you're in the you're in the right ballpark. One to two million, I believe. But even like moving that to three, three, four million, that, that's a big help for a lot of teams. Obviously, the Vancouver Canucks are a part of that. Then they can go get their free agent that they want, Chris. Oh God, no! Don't go getting free agents just yet. Um, no, I'm with you, and I think I love this point of the playoffs because I love the first round when it starts, and everyone's so excited to go out and watch and watch every game and take in every game, and you got to watch Sportsnet every night to watch it all over again. I tell you what, man, you get to, you know, you start to get to game five, six, seven of some series and they're three, one. And you're like, I don't need to watch. Uh, I don't need to watch Minnesota and Dallas play another one. Do I? So like that, I like this point in the season. Listen, eight teams remaining now. It's a lot of fun. This is, this is, this is part of like, I like, I really enjoy the start of the first two, first two rounds of the Stanley cup playoffs. That's my favorite time. We're going to get it tonight. So I'm excited about that too, but Hey, listen, I don't know. Maybe maybe a couple of bucks here and there will help. But uh, if you want that, you're cheering for Toronto, right? Like, you know, let's be honest here. I guess you get it with Toronto, you get it with McDavid and Edmonton. So you're cheering for Canadian teams, I guess, if you're cheering for some bankroll to roll into the NHL. But, uh, like, I'm looking here, and there's not really another major city, right? Like, you're talking about, like, obviously Vegas is a major city, but it's, like, major teams. Like, Florida doesn't really push the needle. Do the Rangers – or do the Devils push the needle? No. Carolina? No. Kraken, like they're starting to, to really grasp on it in Seattle. I know Lisa can can vouch for this. I hear they're they're all over the front page of the of the sports sections now in the newspaper and everything. So that's good to hear. But yeah, it's gonna be it's about the lease and it's about McDavid if you're talking cap space, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe there's an argument to be made for New Jersey, that whole New York area. We know how much the NHL loves that, but you're right. It really does come down to the Leafs and in a smaller way, but still a somewhat significant way the Oilers as well. So if you're cheering for a higher cap, you are cheering for the Toronto Maple Leafs, ladies and gentlemen. Oof. Um okay, do you want <laughs> do you want to get to our picks here? You you want to are are we giving yeah. in how many games too? Are we giving a winner with the amount of games we think it's going to take? Yeah. Alex has got to wake up. He's already ready to clock out in 2 minutes here. Uh we need Alex for this one as well. So we're not going to give too much of an explanation. You can if you want. I'm probably not going to give too much. Give us your winner and give us in how many quads we'll get you to start. So we'll start. Okay, hold on, I got to uh, I'll, I'll do the team. I got all the teams ready here. I got a big board, nice graphic. It'll be up on uh, Thursday's show. Edmonton and Vegas. Who do you got, and how many? Edmonton in six. All right, Alex, where are you going with Edmonton and Vegas? I got the feeling that Edmonton's got the juice. They're gonna take it. What do you think? And how many games? How many games? They won't take it easy. It'll be six games. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Vegas in seven. I'm going to go Vegas in seven just off of a vibe and to be a little bit different. Um, Alex, we'll start with you. Kraken and Dallas Stars. Seattle Kraken, Dallas Stars. Alex, where are you going with this one? The Kraken are going to ride the good vibes they have from beating the defending champs in the first round and the Dallas Stars are fakes because they had all those loser points in the regular season. So we're going Kraken in six. All right. Quads where you want to go with uh, Kraken and stars. 
Kraken in five. Kraken in five. All right. Not just saying that because I'm wearing a Mariners hat. Oh, no, 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 I get it. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go crack in in seven. I feel like that's gonna be a really fun time uh, for the city of Seattle uh, and their surrounding areas. They support their crack, and I think they're gonna like that. They're gonna go uh, seven games there. They're gonna win this thing. Um, all right, quads. We'll start with you. Devils and Hurricanes. Where are we going here? This to me, Chris. Like I'm looking at these series. They're all gonna be good series, but. Mm-hmm. To me, this is the one that you look at and you say, not only do I think this is going to go the distance, I think this is going to be one of the more entertaining series. I don't know about highest scoring series. I honestly, I think that's going to be Edmonton and Vegas. I think this is going to be one of those series where you really don't have a good handle on who's pulling ahead and who's not. Like, I think it's going to go, I think it's going to go to seven. I, I, it's hard to pick a winner. Like I genuinely don't know. I, I'm not confident in whoever I'm picking. I'll say the devils. Cause I'd like to see the devils move on. I think that would be great for that young team. Um, you know, that just two years ago was at the basement of the league standings. Right. So um, funny how that works by the way, but uh, the New Jersey devils is my pick New Jersey and seven. All right. I I'll go next here because I want to feed off of that one. This is my, this is my hottest take. I think of the, of my predictions. I'm going to go with the Devils in four. I believe they're going to sweep the Carolina Hurricanes. Heard it here first. I like that. Alex, I yeah, like I, that. Like, I, I like the way that the Devils play, and they kind of play like um, like when they're playing good, they play a similar brand of hockey to the Hurricanes, but I think the Devils just have that, that high-end talent. And I think when they're playing the same type of hockey, mm-hmm. the high-end talent might show a little bit. So I'm going to go with the Devils in four. I, I think it would be that would be awesome for for playoff hockey, and that's a series that you talked about. It. You're you're excited about this. I'm not. This is the worst series for me. This is the worst series for me to watch. I think just from really? from the vibes that I get from the two teams. Yeah, it's it's the word. It's the one that uh, catches my attention least. I think so. Alex, where are you going here? Devils and Hurricanes. I'm kind of on your page, but a different way here. I got to go Carolina in seven. I think the Devils are going to give them a hell of a a run here, and they're definitely going to get some wins. That that the young goalie they have, Akira Schmid, he's like been on fire in the playoffs, and he's going to let he's going to let Cam Ward the Hurricanes, but not quite. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're going to lose a close one. The Canes, they're just they're I think they're just a little bit better. I agree with you on everything you said about the Devils. They are they. And Hughes, Jack Hughes is like, wow. I watched him last night. He was so slippery. Um, but the Canes, that structure, they're going to come through. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, chat, we're getting some. Chats agree, yeah. Yeah. With, with Alex here. They like the way that Alex is uh, thinking here. Everybody's rocking with Alex in Carolina. Uh, getting some nice alards in the, uh, in the chat. Do you want to go to the next one? You got something there, Quads? Well, I was just going to say the chat. Uh, I'm Mr. Bus Driver brought up a good point here. He said, got to cheer for the Canes. No way Quinn Hughes stays in Vancouver if New Jersey wins the cup. It's an interesting, it's an interesting perspective. It's an interesting way to pick your, uh, pick your horse. And I, uh, look, there's no wrong answers here. Uh, Karan said Carolina in five, they destroy teams like New Jersey. Jesse town also said Carolina in six. Uh, and a lot of people want to see Rod, the bod Rod Brindamore. Uh, they want to see him win a cup as a head coach. So it'll be an interesting series. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a boring series, Chris at all. Like I think, I think it's going to be a good one. I think it's going to be a good series. Give me devils in four, make it exciting. And uh, yeah, Rod, the bod, good, uh, good Vancouver Island kid. They got the, the Rob Brendan Moore, the Brendan Moore arena up there in Campbell river, I believe it's called. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Last one. We'll start with Alex heading out East, the Leafs and the Panthers. Alex, talk us through this one. Uh, you're, you're close. You're on the ground there. Yeah, this is a, you know, there's a couple, there's voting with my head and voting with my heart here, but, uh, you know, Tampa wasn't really a test in the first round, really. I, I know they used to have good, you know, they had good runs and all that, but they, since January 1st, they were the 21st ranked, the 21st team in the league. Like the Of the playoff teams, they were the last, they were really not, and, and I think it's from February 1st, they were ranked 23rd. So they really weren't a test. Now the Panthers are up at, I think, in the same time frames, around, ranked around 14. And, and, and the Leafs ranked 9th. 
simply going with the Leafs based on some stats here because I don't think that's I, – I really don't think it's going to be much of a test. I think the Bruins were really beat up, but I think some of that's starting to come out now. And that's kind of what happened there. And uh, I'm going to have to say Leafs. The, the Panthers are going to do well here. They're going to make it a series. Leafs in six. Leafs in six. All right, Quads, we'll let you go next year. I like uh, – Alex has got all the inside info. He's done probably Leafs morning talk today too, so he's got everything about this series. He could have told us, uh, you know, who's playing on the fourth line for both teams and how many minutes they're going to play. All right, Quads, and what do you got? Le- the nice kid. They have the nice kid. He's, he's on the top yeah. line now. Those vibes are – I you know, the one thing is the, the Leafs might have overspent their emotion mm. in winning that round one and then – they celebrated like an, a, a baseball team winning a series. This is going to cause me physical pain because this show is quickly turning into Leafs morning take. Oh, no. But no. Chris, I, and I hate to say this, like, you know what? I hate to say it, but I'm saying it as an impartial observer. The Leafs getting out of the first round, and holy cow, I sound like a sports employee or any employee of uh, one of the national broadcasters. <laughs> The Leafs getting out of the first round felt a lot like them slaying the dragon. And what happened after the Canucks slayed the dragon? They went to the final. Look, maybe I have a different take if it's Boston. And look, Florida, everybody underestimated Florida. Florida's a solid team. Like, Florida's a very, very good team. It feels like the Leafs are going to go on a run here. Like, it really does. I'm going to say Leafs in six as well. Sorry, I had to play the Rogers sound for you there. Um, you're going Leafs in six as well. Okay. So you guys are both going Leafs in six. I, I can't do the same thing then. Uh, give Listen, I, I think Toronto's going to win too. Um, give me Leafs in five. So I guess I'm even more of, wow. uh, of a Toronto guy than you are. I guess from my answer I there, think, I guess. I think there's a chance it goes to seven. I just think the Leafs get it done. And also, I'm willing to listen to the idea of uh, them having overspent their emotion. I'm willing I to like listen that. to it. And that's not just because it'd be fun if the Leafs get bounced. But look, it feels like it feels like they're going on a run. That's just what it feels like, okay? That's what it feels like. I know. I don't like it. Leafs, Oilers in your Stanley Cup final. That's something. Um, that's kind of my uh, worst case nightmare here, I think. I, I, that's that's not worst what I want at all. It's uh, not the worst case scenario, worst case nightmare, even worse. Worst um, case nightmare. Okay, a couple things. Let me wrap up here. Uh, just let me get through this because you didn't read any of the outline. I had a bunch of stuff in the outline here. All right, <clears throat> big deep breath. Jonathan LeCarrie Mackey, they lost 4 nothing in game seven. Canucks fans know that too well, actually. Uh, LeCarrie Mackey lost 4 nothing in that game. They lost the Al-Svenskan final. Moto ends up going up to the SHL. That's huge for them. I actually talked to Philip Johansson about that. He was like, yeah, Moto, they belong uh, back in the SHL. So they're going to get back to the SHL. LeCarrie Mackey, 15 points in his last 15 games. I talked to him this morning. We're going to have a, a longer conversation. He was a little busy uh, trying to just relax a little bit uh, for a little bit here. But a couple Next couple days, I'll get in contact with him. Uh, we'll have a good chat, uh, and I'll report back on the show. But, yeah, 15 points, 15 playoff games, really good stuff from Jonathan Karamaki. A lot of confidence for him. What's next, though? What is next for him? The AHL? The CHL? The import draft is July 1st, quads. Just so you know, the CHL guys, they get the import draft, and he's a free agent. He's available. Um, or is he back in the Alsvenskan with Jurgarn? He's comfortable there. His family's there in Stockholm. Does he stay there with Jurgarn? We'll have to see. Or does he get a loan to another SHL team? I think that's what the Canucks want. That's what I think the Canucks want. Here's the ideal thing for me. Let me say this. Lucas Forsell. Talk about him a lot on the show. I actually talked to him with Phil Johansson the other day. Playing for Fargestad, playing in their top six. He can play both wings. That would be a really fun thing for me to follow is watching those two play on a line together in the SHL for Fargestad. So uh, that's my dream scenario. Aside from him coming to the HL, it's just it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. He's staying in Sweden. Uh, but my dream scenario he gets loaned to Fargestad in the SHL, plays for them, plays with Lucas Forsell, power play time together, play together at 5-on-5. Uh, five a five. little bit of a dream scenario uh, there for me, but we'll have to uh, see what happens with him. Damon Gardner, he was eliminated from the USHL playoffs, so his season is over. Uh, and then aside from the AHL team, the only other prospects remaining in playoffs, Josh Bloom, Connor Lockhart, 1-1 one, one in that series uh, as they're playing for the Eastern Conference Final in the OHL. Uh, that's all I got. I had, a, I had a really good chat with Philip Johansson. It's probably better to just read it in the article, which uh, was supposed to drop this morning when I was told last night, but uh, found out it's going to be pushed to tomorrow. So that'll be up on uh, Canucks Army tomorrow. Highly recommend that. Phil Johansson was awesome to talk to. 
Uh, really good kid. Uh, excited to get here. Was happy to, to the way the season worked out, but also made it clear like his thought at the time was to go back to the SHL for this past season. Like he played in the SHL when he came over here. He's with Abbotsford for now. And he's like, you know, it was a decision I made and I'm living with it. It may not have been the, the perfect decision, but I don't think either way it was. Like he got to develop really well in the SHL. His team really trusted him. They played him for 27 minutes a night in the playoffs. He's playing a lot of minutes. And to get that opportunity really helped him. So he said at the time, and looking back, it felt like the right decision. So a lot of these people, you know, it, it kind of tails into the Karamaki. We want him in here in the AHL. We want him close. We want him developing with all the people. But is it really the best thing? A lot of the time, the player has to be taken. Like, in my eyes, yes, it's the best thing. But does LeCare Mackey believe that the AHL is the best spot for him as a 19-year-old? I don't think so. I think he wants to stay in Sweden. So that's kind of the, the way that it's talked about. And listen, Phil Johansson was 22 when he made this decision to stay in Sweden for another year and develop and get that opportunity. LeCare Mackey's a little bit ahead of him in his development, but it, it was interesting to hear that conversation. Some really good quotes from a great kid, uh, Philip Johansson, out there. So that'll be up on Canucks Army tomorrow. Uh, and we're talking about it in the live chat right now, but next Monday uh, we will have a show uh, during the draft lottery live show uh, live on YouTube. So be sure to come check it out, folks. A uh, little watch along uh, with the draft lottery coverage. I believe it starts at 4 p.m. Uh, for those asking in the chat of uh, what time. But I guess we could start a little early too. Five o'clock? Okay, Chris is showing I me think a big it's five. five. Let's see what okay, we got. Well, we'll uh, oh, no, you're right. Four o'clock, yep. Nothing there, eh, Alex? Alex is just rolling through, what, rolling through the draft lottery. Alex is running the draft lottery, and he hasn't got the Canucks once. He's on. He's going for his ninth pick now. Um, <laughs> the Canucks haven't moved at all. They've stayed at 11. I just wrote something at Canucks Army, a breakdown of where the Canucks are most likely to pick. And doing the article, I decided to run the simulator on, a Alex, few get times. Come on, Alex. Come on. Decided to run the simulator a few Jeez. times. I'll tell you what. I did three. Canucks won the first pick twice. So all it takes is one time. 3% chance uh, for the Canucks. And as I mentioned in the article, um, 79.9% chance that they stay Eight put uh, at 11th overall. So we'll see what happens on Monday. But uh, the other thing, actually, no, I'm not going to bring this up. It's okay. We're, we're way over time. Do you have anything else before I close it out? No, I tell you, uh, the only thing I have to close out is, Alex, don't ever run that damn thing for the Canucks ever again. That was some of the worst. I've not, when we saw one second place, Alex ran it about 30 times. Holy moly. We're, yeah, that, don't send Alex as, our, as the rep for the Vancouver Canucks. No, thank you. I wonder who so they'll the send. Odds, the odds are stacked against him is what you're saying. Hey, listen, I run, I run it every once in a while. I'm always getting in the top two over here and there. I'm just saying, it, it, and that's the thing. I'm so excited because we'll be here next Monday for this. We'll be doing it live, live reaction. You mentioned at four o'clock, we'll get there. It'll be a live reaction. We'll just be chit chatting about prospects. Uh, maybe we'll have someone join us even at some point. We'll see what happens. But if this, if the moment happens and listen, I don't care. I'm going to say it. if the moment happens and the Canucks get Connor Bedard, it is going to be the best moment in this show's history. It would be unreal to do it live. You know, get it popping. Connor Bedard becomes a Canuck. It is possible, folks. It is possible. We're going to will it into into existence like uh, L- what Lamar Ball says, or LeVar Ball, Lamar Ball, whatever the ball dad is. Uh, he says you will it into existence. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do that next Monday. That's going to be fun. I hope everyone's in here to chat. I also uh, you t- I told this to the to the network. I hope it's one of our most watched live shows as well. Right? Like it should be. I feel like th- there's videos like this all the time on YouTube of people doing like, oh, like live reaction to this or live play by play during the game. And they get good numbers. I hope we have a lot of people there uh, on that Monday uh, at four o'clock next week doing the, the draft lottery stuff. It would be fun. It would be really, really fun. So, oh, I can't wait. I think it's, no, listen, I'm not going to say I think it's going to happen. I'm open to the uh, possibility of it happening. I'll say that. I'm done. What All is right. quads going to cool. be? Are you, are you going to stay at your house, quads? Or are you going to come go back to the studio? What's going on? I'm going to the studio for that one. It'll be a good one. Back in studio. All right. Cool. All I right. Looking forward to it. That's next. <laughs> we'll be, um, and I apologize to people last week. I said we'd be here on Monday for our show. We pushed it to Tuesday because I was going to head out to Abbotsford. I went there yesterday for the drive. So apologies about the schedule. But we will be back on Thursday. I know that for sure. We'll be back here on Thursday. Hopefully, we aren't wrapping up the Alex for Canucks season. Uh, and we'll be both, both of us, you're coming tomorrow? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Both of us will be out there at the Abbotsford Center uh, tomorrow. So follow along on Twitter, all that stuff. Yeah, we're asking for a Burt Cam. You got to give Lisa what she wants in the chat there, Quads. Otherwise, you don't get dessert tonight for dinner. Yeah, Karan wants Burt. Everybody wants Burt. Blah, blah, blah. They don't care about, uh, they want uh, me off the cam here. Yeah, he's snoozing. Oh, belly up. Might want to go check on him there, Quads. Belly up. (laughs) That's for fish. He's okay. He's just sleeping. (laughs) Okay, I don't know. Dogs. All right, we'll close it out there. Oh, I got I actually no Patreon. We'll do a Patreon soon too. Uh, I'm teaching them some new tricks. I was telling you about them. So we'll close it out there. Uh, for my co-host Chris Faber and our technical producer Alex Lard, our thanks again to Chase Waters of the oh, Abbotsford Canucks for joining us on this show, courtesy of our friends at Zephyr Epic. My name is David Guadrelli. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Canucks Conversation. Forget, forget the Eagle Cam. It's all Seagull Cam. Thanks for listening to Canucks Conversation. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. How about keep it to a thank you, Jim?